What's up guys, it's Giovanni. In this following video, I'm going to show you one of my free training presentations. In this presentation, when you watch it, you're going to learn a couple of things that are gonna be really useful for your dating life. Number one, I will show you how the authentic attraction cycle actually works. How you can actually start being more yourself, expressing yourself better, being more authentic, and having that result in getting higher quality women in your dating life. And you'll see how I use some of these attraction and connection principles to really have an amazing first reaction and get a solid number. Most importantly, you'll actually learn how I came up with the products that I developed, the programs I developed, if you ever decide to invest in yourself in that area. And lastly, you'll actually learn a little bit about my history, how I got good at this, the kind of the obstacles I came across. And I do think that will help you a lot in having at least an example of someone who really struggled to get this and how you can apply it to your own life and break through some of the challenges, limiting beliefs that you have about what you're capable of when it comes to attracting and dating the type of person that you really want. Okay, enjoy. Without attraction, nothing happens, right? Attraction and comfort, right? As my mentor Eric would say, the girl has to feel comfortable with you and the girl has to feel attracted to you in order for anything to happen that kicks off a dating cycle. But then I realized sometimes when you're talking to girls, you guys ever get a friend zone or you like run out of things to say, or maybe you have a great conversation, but then when you text her, it's like, yeah, we can hang out as friends. Cool. Like, and you're like, no, I wanted more. So then I realized like, well, the, you need to create attraction, but then also you need to create connection, connection. And then there are different ways to, that I figured out to create connection quickly, the most efficiently that I know, uh, efficient way possible. And then once I had connection and attraction, I started seeing, oh, I was actually getting selection. So Tony Robbins would say it's attraction, selection, and connection. But I realized you can't have selection if you don't have options. So when you have options, then it becomes, how do I come up with a framework to select the right person for me? Whether it's you know dating casually or dating more seriously, how can I come up with a way to select easily and efficiently? And then once you select the right person, be it a one night stand or, you know, Insta date or a long-term girlfriend, then what you, what you start to see happen is that your belief system start to change, your behavior patterns start to change, your number will start to change. And then when that shift happens, then it kind of goes through another cycle, right? Then you start with attraction again, but now you're on a different level of girl, if you will. So if you're used to certain type of girls, now you feel like you're congruent with that. And then you move on to the next stage of, of whatever type of girl that you want. And that cycle continues. Being able to go through this cycle efficiently is, is how I was able to, to date freely. Why should you listen to me? Yeah, good question. Why are you guys here? <laughs> uh, I was a pretty nerdy kid, man. This, that was me in high school. That was me in college. Um, in high school, I was beat up pretty badly. Uh, there were some bad kids in my high school. So they used to call me rat face. And uh, even in my yearbook, they would sign like, oh, I'm, oh, good luck. I'm your friend. But really, you know, just a little rat over here. So I remember this, these guys drew like pictures of rats and they passed around the whole school. Uh, I remember going online and, and talking on a, on a chat and then like having my whole chat log like shared with everybody. It was bad. It was like, it was like organized um, cyber bullying, bullying in that case. So I grew up pretty, I was a happy kid, but when I got to high school, man, things just went down, you know, really bad. And so I, because of that experience, I was socially awkward. I, I was anxious all the time. I was always afraid of things. Um, I don't know if you got, any of you can relate to this, but after a while, I was like, uh, I was a happy kid, but then it got to a point where you ever see someone, you look in their eyes and you can see like their spirits dead. Like there's, a, there's no spark in their eye, right? They're just like dead. And, and, and when they smile, it's like kind of a fake smile. That was me. Okay. And so I was like super, I wasn't super depressed, but I, I felt defeated. I felt like there was no no way forward. There was no map forward. You know, I was 23. I was a virgin and I just, I, I couldn't talk to girls and I couldn't even talk to my managers properly. And I got into trouble a lot because I couldn't read social cues. And so I think for that reason, right, I'm, I'm so, I became so obsessed with figuring this out. Um, so one day I, I got rejected really badly from this one girl and it was like close to like a hundred, like it was, it was, it was bad. It was like maybe a hundred or 90, a rejection number 90. And then I just, I just was like, fuck this, man. I'm like, I got to figure this out. So I, I, I became, I dedicated my life to figuring this out. I remember telling myself, like, if I, if I don't figure this out, I'll die trying. <clears throat> and so that, that kicked off my journey. Um, 
some of my uh, stumbling blocks, and I'll just talk about these briefly so you can you can relate and maybe you can take what I learned and apply it to you. Like I believe what people were saying about me, even though it wasn't true, right? And these people were putting their frame around me and they're putting a negative frame. And I somehow, like at some point, I just let it like become reality. And it created these walls all around me. I also didn't know how to ask for brutally honest feedback. Uh, I was like, oh, I'm okay. You know, I'm fine. But in reality, it was like, no, I need, I don't know how to talk to women and I need help. And once I admitted that, uh, my progress came a lot faster. I was also afraid to fail. I was afraid to go up to girls and say hello. Um, and the biggest mistake I made was that I never sought out the guys who already were good at this. The moment I looked for my first mentor, the moment I found him, it was like night and day, right? Because if you want to be the best at something, you want to find someone who's already succeeding at that and literally replicate what they're doing. You don't have to be like them, but when you replicate the things they're doing, you'll see how it works and you'll feel how it works. Then you'll be like, oh, I can actually incorporate these into my own life. And it just, it's different when I logically tell you something on, on a, you know, live versus like, me showing you and you were experiencing it, right? Like if I take clients out in Vegas and I show them like, this is how you do it. I bring them into an interaction afterwards. They're like, oh, that's what it feels like. <laughs> in my mind, it was, I had a client tell me, in my mind, I felt like I had to like be Chris Angel, like be a magician, like do all these cool tricks. And I'm like, no, a good, a good pickup is like a normal, authentic, like deep conversation. And, and he didn't get that until he, he got the experience, right? So, okay. My method is based on female psychology, so it works regardless of your looks or money. That's actually a quote from my mentor. I, I doubt anyone knows who this is from, but if you do, I'd be really impressed. Does anyone know who this quote is from? Anyone on TikTok know <laughs> which quote this is from? Thanks. I, though, you guys are too young, man. I mean, this was my mentor back when I was like, you know, 23. So um, he also said, when done right, um, the, the woman's experience is a it's a privilege to be in, to be picked up by someone who knows what he's doing right so that's from eric malmarker but you guys can look him up but um i would say his his early work really changed my life and for the first time in my life as a dorky virgin sexless 23 year old i i got to i i found his work and i'm like oh there is a process for this like for the first time there was like a map and that completely transformed my life uh, because from that moment, moment forward I no longer doubted whether or not dating was a skill set. I no longer doubted that this was something I could learn step by step. And so with that conviction came this journey to just get good at, at dating skills, right? Which actually after about a year or two translated into all other areas of my life, including my professional life, which you'll see later. Um, so <laughs> I, I went all out, right? I got the leather jacket. I got, I got the, the sunglasses. I even dyed my hair, man. It was insane, dude. So I went all out. I had a two year festival schedule. I literally just like, was, I was like, how many girls can I talk to as soon as possible? I made a, so many mistakes. Uh, it was embarrassing, but uh, at least I was, <laughs> it felt good because I was doing something. Finally, I, I was no longer sitting there feeling sorry for myself, blaming other people, blaming women, blaming my parents. I was like, okay. Let me just go out and get the reference experiences that I need. Um, and I went all out. Um, that was cool. Now, here's a really interesting quote. I think I, I hope that you incorporate it into your life, which is just because something doesn't go, sorry, typo, what you plan it, how you plan it to go, it doesn't mean that it's useless. Okay. And this was by a billionaire. Does anyone know? Nah, this is a hard one. Okay. Uh, Thomas Edison, right? So he failed like many, many times. People were making fun of him. His lab burned down, but he got every failure to him was like a data point. So I realized like every, even though I'm, I'm messing up and getting rejected, all of those are building to something. And, and I, and I had faith in that not every day, but overall my path strategically, I had faith that, that I, I was going to find a solution. So as you can see, I'm so <laughs> going the K-pop look here. Um, I was very structured and very analytical. I, I got into like this, this whole pickup community thing, but I also learned from people that weren't in it. But when I got into it, I realized like, to be honest with you, the, all the stuff I heard was, I didn't experience it. I, for me, the majority of men, and you guys can probably relate to this, right? You guys on TikTok or you guys on Facebook live, or you guys on Google meets, the majority of men that I met were really just guys who were just good guys. Uh, they would give me places to stay when I visited their cities for free. 
uh, we would go out and they were just good intention guys who didn't want to settle. They didn't believe in living a life where like life dictated what was given to you. They believed like they had the power to change their lives, to be better. And, and I would say like, I, I, I met like one guy who was like kind of shady, but for the most part, the majority of people that I met on this journey was super cool. Yeah, do not be embarrassed by your failures, learn from them and start again. So I had some pretty embarrassing moments, you know, I've been kicked out of places, uh, you know, when you're learning this stuff, right? Like social mistakes are not like, it's not like you're missing like numbers from a business. It's social mistakes happen and it's important that you learn from them again. Um, and I think uh, when you have that mentality, then you're no longer embarrassed or feel worthless. So you don't attach your self-worth or your self-value to, um, you know, failing, quote unquote. How I got better, yeah, one thing at a time. I tested one thing at a time. I acknowledged my fears. I started desensitizing some of my fears. And then I used fear to my advantage, right? So those of you, like, one of my the surveys I took was, uh, I think 40% of you guys said, I'm afraid to go up and talk to girls, right? So number one is, what's your reason for doing this? Number two, like, give your friend $20. Don't tell them not to give it back to you until you talk to three people. I tried to imagine, like, six months from now where I would be. And I tried to... Um, like I, I would like promise myself I wouldn't drive back to my to, to my house until I talked to three people that day. So there, I was just like stacking techniques to make myself like force myself to go talk to people um, and get better. Yeah, whatever. My last girlfriend, my girlfriend before that, I have her permission to. So she's a really nice girl. Um, so I, I met I met some pretty cool girls. I'm not showing you this to, to impress you. I'm just showing you this to impress upon you that like. Like I'm not talking out of my ass, right? Like I've, I've been there, I've, I've, I've had a long journey. Um, and I think my, my goal is just to impart the, the specific way I do it that I think it doesn't exist right now on the market. And, and so um, my, my job in the next year is really to put this out there so that there's a systematic way for you guys as well to get predictable results, to get consistent results and to do in a way where you feel like you're you're more yourself and you're more authentic rather than you know being someone that you're not. The girl won't make you happy. Yeah, that's true. Actually, one of my mentors told me that and I, it kind of made me sad. But um, I think what's inspiring is that when you're on this journey and you get better, what you realize is that the girl will make you happy, but the guy you become will make you happy. So halfway along my journey, I realized like, wow, I, my speaking's better. I can read social cues. Sometimes I can predict what people are saying. I was able to anticipate things that my boss needed because of, it, because of the way he, you know, his micro expressions and, and the things that he said. And so I realized like this skill set, I'm so glad I, I made a, you know, life or death decision to learn it because it, it allowed me to be happy with like the man I was becoming. It was no longer about the girl, right? It was about like, what do I need to do? How, what do I need to transform to become a guy that I feel like I have the potential to be? Yeah, we'll leave it at that. You, <laughs> this is my mentor. I don't want to give give his name away. Um, you guys probably know this if you watch my YouTube videos or, or if you're on my TikTok, <laughs> you've seen my videos. But uh, I'm not that cool, man. I'm kind of a nerd. I'm still a nerd. Um, <laughs> I'm a huge nerd, and I think when I when I embraced that, I, my game actually got better because it was no longer me trying to be this cool alpha guy that obviously wasn't. Um, <laughs> The picture on the left. So we got invited to the Playboy Mansion, <clears throat> partially due to our business, partially due to, you know, my social engineering skills. And then I, I, my friend and I were like, okay, can we dress up as Pokemon nerds and still pick up chicks? <laughs> so we did that. And then we went to the mansion and those are the three girls that we met. Um, we hung out with a lot that night. There were a lot of girls there, but that was the last night, Midsummer Night's Dream, 2000, I think 17 or 18. It was the last year Hefner was alive. It was the last Playboy party. And, you know, I think that was like the, the climax of, of one of my journeys, which is, can I just be a huge nerd and still have the skills to like meet girls, right? And that was really exciting. Um, here I am with my girlfriend, literally just, I'm dressed like I'm going on a hike. You know, we're not, it's not like I'm, you don't see, you see pictures of me being really like in fashion shows and stuff, but in reality, it's like, I'm, I dress up when I, when I go out or there's an event. But other than that, I'm pretty much hanging out at home I don't play computer games that much, but I'm reading stuff. I'm a, I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> this is a cat magnet, a pussy magnet. <laughs> so that was my Halloween costume. 
that's a friend of mine and uh yeah you know you know cats uh you know yeah so <laughs> i i'm basically once i learned how to embrace like who i really was with the skills that i had i got more results than i ever did and i think that's a big lesson right a lot of guys tell me well i'm not like not that alpha i'm not that dominant i'm kind of a nerd or i'm kind of like you know i know guys are just very polite she's like i have to be an alpha right and i'm like well look the things that make you you nobody else can copy but you just have to figure out a way to make whatever that that makes you 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 have to figure out a way to 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 get that to to express that part of you that's so authentic and so sweet that your mom loves that you know like that's makes you you in in a way that is attractive in a dating cycle and my the system that i that i figured out basically draws that out of you right so then you become like super attractive and you can connect with people and you don't have to do it in a way where you know you feel fake or phony and and ironically or maybe paradoxically uh the girls like you more for it so once i figured that out i started trying it with different clients and then i saw the results right it, different clients have different um learning curves some clients like within a few weeks they, they see results other clients take a few months just it depends on where they are and how fast they learn okay different people and people have different learning methods but what I'm trying to tell you is that you don't have to be someone you're not. And if you can figure out a way to tell your story attractively within the dating context, then you can get the results you want as well. Yeah. I mean, I was a 23 year old rat face. I was, you know, beat up in high school. I had no friends in high school. Um, I mean, if I can do it, I think you can too. There's really nothing special about me. I always tell my clients, like if you took a guy who was socially awkward, or, you know, somewhat socially anxious, if he did like the work that I did, he would be good too, because I just did so much work, but you don't have to do all that much work <laughs> because I've already figured it out for you. I already have a system that works. And so, you know, skip the 10 years of like trial and error, <laughs> just copy, copy something that works. If, if, if you feel like it resonates with you, let me take a temperature check. How's everyone doing? Uh, yeah. Does physical appearance like working out help? Definitely for sure. Um, I, I was working out pretty hard when I was in my modeling days, but I, what I noticed was that, um, I think working out just makes you feel more confident because you're, you have all this like new, um, chemicals in your body from working out. What, what I found with the biggest change for me, biggest change for me was the, the, the style changes, right? Cause I realized like your look is more important than your looks, like your look as in what's the image you're presenting. And when I changed my style, it was like. I became a different person, right? Style is one of those things that you can change really quickly that completely transforms a dude. And, and, um, that for me was like the biggest, biggest change for me. I think working out is great. Definitely do it. Uh, losing weight is great. Staying healthy is great. All those things help, but I would say do it for you. If you do that, do it for you. Because when it comes to dating, right, as long as you're not like extremely overweight or you look like anorexic, like if it's not like an extreme, then if you have a good style and you have good communication skills and your nonverbals are good, those three pillars, right. will get you like most guys, like the, the results that they want. Okay, cool. All right. Let me continue then. So no one wants to run a set with me, huh? <laughs> I guess it's, so it can't be embarrassing. I'm Dan. Uh, who said that? I'm Danny? Uh, me. Yeah. Oh, Hey let's Danny, it, what's up? You want to run it? Okay, go ahead. Run it. Yeah, let's, let's go, man. Uh, am I approaching or are you, uh, it doesn't matter if you want to see how I pick up, like how to talk to girls, then I can game you. Or if you want to practice, then you can try me. All right. I, I would love to see how you game man. All right. So I need you to pretend cause we've done this before, right? I, I, you were like, uh, yeah. Danny's one of my clients in LA. So, um, okay. Pick a, pick a female character, give her a name, give her a quick backstory, and then just let me know when you're ready. All right, got it. You got it? Yep. Okay. Hey, you looked interesting and uh, <laughs> I wanted to meet you. Oh, hi. Is nice there? To meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. What's your name? Chelsea. Chelsea. Giovanni. Hey. <laughs> Excuse me. It's cold today. Excuse me one second. Chelsea, is there a reason you're wearing an earthling hat or are you just a. Uh, environment fan. I I just uh I just really like it. I like <laughs> the hat, you know. 
You just wore it just because you like the hat. You yeah. don't care. You don't care if it's embarrassing or who cares, right? Who cares? And yeah, you know what? The people cares? that the people that really like it, they're gonna be your real friends because they'll get you. Uh, thank you, fellow Earthlings. Thank you <laughs> Um, <laughs> listen, Chelsea, I'm, I used to live in LA. I don't anymore. So I'm just here. I'm here for a few days. Um, just out of curiosity, are you working in, the in some type of, like, does your work involve working with people or more like in front of a screen? Uh, it involves working around people. You're helping people. Yeah. Are you a lawyer? <laughs> no, no. I guess lawyers don't really help people. Well, it depends how you look at it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You want to give me a hint, Chelsea? Uh, yeah. It's uh, it's around like mental health. Oh, okay. All right. That sounds sensitive. I don't know if I should continue. Do you like what you do? I do. Cool. Cool. So you're helping a lot of people in mental health, and you enjoy what you do. I love it. Um, I recently quit my corporate job, so like I made more money, do, like you know, going to meetings and stuff. But I realized like what I do now, I'm so much happier, even though I make less money. You know what I mean? So I like that you I like do. what you do. Yeah, and so many people in LA, I don't know, I don't know if they like what they do. Don't, have you noticed that? <laughs> I know, I know a few people. Yeah, right. So anyway, um, I wanted what to do ask you. you around? Sorry, what was that? What do you work around? What do I work around? Yeah. I uh, coach people on dating and relationships. Like, for example, are you single right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea, the way, the way you said that, yeah, was, there was a second pause. Like, am I single? Should I tell him? <laughs> yes, I'm single. <laughs> like, am I being single? <laughs> Are you single? Right? Okay, so you're single. Um, yeah. If you don't, well, since we start, you started this. So what do you, yeah. what do you do? How do, how's the dating life for you? As in, like, are you getting a lot of matches on Tinder? Do you meet guys in the during the daytime? Like, what's or are you just not meeting people at all? Uh, it's it's crazy on Tinder. Like, I just get too many matches. So, so from like weird guys. So damn, you're so cool. It's too bad they're all weird, huh? Yeah. Isn't it so cool when a when a good looking non weird guy comes up to you and says hello? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, listen. You know, I enjoy, okay. I, enjoy, I love your vibe, Chelsea. Listen, I, I'm, I'm, my friends are waiting for me. So let okay. me ask you this real quick. Um, do you have any kind of dancing experience? Have you ever danced? Yeah, I've done, I've done dancing. What type? Salsa. Nice. Um, tea or coffee? Tea. Awesome. Cool. Me too. I hate, I hate coffee personally. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to go. But before I do, since I'm only in town for a few days, would you prefer that I invite you out to salsa dancing and because I like salsa dance and tea? Or maybe we keep in touch next time you go to Vegas? Uh, we can keep in touch. There, here's my here's my number. Here's my phone. Uh, just put your number in so I remember. Okay. Well, I'm glad yeah, I ran. Yeah. Into, I'm glad I ran into you. Yeah, yeah, it was nice running into you too. Okay, just do me one favor. Okay, when you save my number in your phone, please don't make it like hot Asian guy, because I want people to know me for me. You know, like my personality. I'm just not a piece. I'm not a piece of meat. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Chelsea. All right. Nice to meet you. All right. Nice okay. And see. All right. Yeah. Did you learn anything from that? <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's like, it's witty, it's like, it's fast paced, and it's just like, it doesn't seem like you, you thought too much, it's just like, like that, mm -hmm. you know? Good. What were some of the techniques that you noticed that I used? Since I, I know you, I trained with you before, so what were some of the techniques that I applied? Off the top of my head, I, I can't, I can't really... I can't really name anything uh, off the top of my head, but I did notice that you you didn't you led the whole thing. You didn't wait for this awkward pause. You kept going. You talked about yourself. 
and you talk about her and you even like ask her like if it's okay to like go into deeper um into what she was doing and if not you know just keep going it wasn't too logical but like it's it's fun it's not like oh so what do you do like tell me about that oh tell me more how'd you find it you know it's like like boom 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 it's not because my, my conversations i noticed that i go very logical so it was very yeah. awesome to do that yeah, that's great. So I'll give you three three techniques because I layered a couple of techniques from my my system, right? But I'll give you three because okay. no one can remember all of them. And I'd rather you take yeah. a few and like incorporate it than try to like memorize like 10 different techniques and forget all of them yeah. tomorrow. So the first thing that, that I did was I avoided any type of like tripwire questions, right? So there are questions that um, people ask that are just like so generic. Every girl has heard it hundreds of times. What do you do? Where are you from? How do you, do you come here often? So I made statements instead, right? Do you hope I can work with someone? Your, your, your job involves helping people. Um, one mistake guys will make is that when they have something in common, like salsa, like you said, th the biggest newbie mistake is they'll, they'll spend another 20 minutes talking about salsa. But the real key to closing the deal is to move the interaction forward. So instead of that, I just said tea or coffee. And then I said, my friends are waiting for me. I have to go, but I like your vibe, right? At every point yeah. in the interaction, I allowed the girl to be her, but I allowed her, but I still controlled the frame and I was moving things forward to close, not close the deal, but like to, to connect in a, to close the interaction in a way that would end up in a romantic connection. Towards the end of the call, yeah. towards the end of the interaction, you, you, you may have noticed like I was, um, what did I say? I let the girl, because I was only there for a few days, I let the girl decide what type of connection she wants to have with me. So something I'll say is, you know, what's comfortable for you? Do you, how do you keep in touch with your friends? Or since I'm here for a few days, would you like my number or should we keep in touch through Instagram? That's easier. And then when she says like, keep, take my number, if she's, if a girl says that and she knows you're there for a few days, she probably wants to see you again. Right? So that's how I qualify my, the, the girls I talk to in a way that's like comfortable. There were a couple of other techniques I threw in there, but the most important thing was, you know, like you gave me good energy. So what I, what you want to do when a girl gives you good energy is you take that energy and then you like stack it. If a girl's not giving you energy, then you recalibrate back. But if she's giving energy, you stack it forward. If she's giving you a hard time, you qualify or you challenge or you add value. And then when she opens up, then you take that energy and you stack it up and you go forward. So. Cool, man. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it. Um, I think that interaction okay. and that explanation will help a lot because um, I'm recording this and I'll send you the links after. Cool. All right. Back to the presentation and then I'll take another Q&A at the end. Don't worry, guys. So um, what you just saw, this is like the general cycle, but um, I came up with like very specific. I was like an engineer, man. I'm like, all right, how do I engineer this whole social interaction? So. Um, the way I did it was just by really, really diving deep into like the exact steps. I mean, this whole, every single step in this, in this slide can take me probably a day to explain to you, but the important thing is that, um, it's there. <laughs> the most important, I think for me, the first three steps, like your style, your non verbals and your honest signals, those three things, the most common complaint I get from guys is like the type of girl I really want when I talk to her, it goes nowhere or I get rejected right away. Or like I get her number, but like I, I can never get her out on a date, right? And I find that most of those complaints or those challenge points really have to do with the first three steps of this cycle, which are nonverbals, um, your honest signals, and your style attraction. And all of those I can talk more in depth about. I do talk about them in depth on my YouTube channel. Then I realized like you have to figure out how to actually create attraction. And then one of the things I do really well is like qualification and frame, right? So in other words, people value what they invest in. So when the girl feels like she's investing in the conversation, if you're, if you're controlling the conversation in a way where she feels like she has to put in the input and when she puts input, she gets something back in return, that exchange of value is really powerful when it comes to, um, creating that stickiness so that the numbers she wants to see you again. And, and my flake rates are much lower than what they used to be. Once I figured this out, then I realized like if you can get a first date or if you're on an Insta date, the emotional investment is really important. And then I realized congruence and identity, all these three, all the yellow steps are like steps I've developed myself because I realized that as an Asian guy, I just didn't have that. I could have the same level of attraction, but the moment a good looking white guy 
walks in or a, a equivalent guy of my value, superficial value walks in, I just lose the girl. So I had to figure out a way, how can I create that connection with her? The more time she spends with me. And so congruence and identity, I figured out grounding sequences that are so powerful. And then I figured out how to use vulnerability and connection, not in a manipulative way, but in a way where I can build that bond with her. And then like the intimacy, which I can't talk about publicly, but being good at that made girls that even hated me, kept hitting me up. <laughs> it was weird. It's like, I, I thought you hated me. She's like, yeah, but like, can we hang out? <laughs> so that's, this is like the whole process, right? Like if you think about it from the moment you meet her to the moment she's like, Hey, am I your girlfriend? This whole process, I break it down. Um, so I, I do break this down in, in one of my products and I priced it pretty, pretty reasonably in the first day formula. And the thing I wanted to do there was like, okay, let me give someone like precise copy and paste stuff. And then let me give them my infields as well. So I can break it down. They can see it in person. And then let me give them the principles. So if you think about game, when I say game, I mean, like in case there are any like social justice warriors <laughs> recording this call, it's like the interaction uh, between men and women, right? Or the, you can even think about game as how you talk to your parents, right? It's, it's how you control how you come across socially to be the best self and to the best of your ability. So there's like the psychology of social techniques, which is the precision of like the words I'm using, my tonality, the nonverbals that I'm, I'm implementing as I'm speaking. But then there's like the artistry of it, which is everyone's different. I know guys who are high pitched that are a little bit more feminine and they have to find like that artistry using the principles that we know technically work. I have guys who are super dominant. They've got a deep voice, but girls find like, especially military guys in San Diego, girls find them boring or they get into a relationship and the girl's like, I'm divorcing you because you can't express yourself. Right? So I realized there's a science of like the psychology behind it and the studies that, that, you know, support that. And then there's like the art of the holistic inner game. So I tried to kind of incorporate that into the first day formula. And then most of you guys, I think some of the guys on the call already have it, but if you want a copy of it, go to high integrity skills.com slash first date. Some of the comments I got from students, right? So yeah. How hey Gio. Yeah, go ahead. Your, uh, your TikTok. Yeah. Oh, it ended. Yeah. Okay. I guess I maxed out my TikTok. Well, they're going to have to do with that. That's fine. TikTok has a maximum live time. Okay. These are some of the things that some of the feedback that I got from first day formula, the best investment you can make is in yourself. Great. Awesome. Um, I think this will be helpful for you guys. Pete was, uh, he was actually one of those Asian guys who, who could talk, <clears throat> but he was actually really, really close. He just, the way he talked, uh, he texted on um, online dating was a little bit off and his style was good, but it was just a little bit off of the type of girls he was getting. So once we started fixing like some of the style mistakes and then we started fixing like the way he would talk to girls, for example, he was just very like for him, like the most important thing was to have fun, which I totally get. Right. On the other hand, it's like, how can I have fun and then move the action forward? So there's one thing to just clown on a girl or like laugh with her and then nothing happens. And then there's another thing to like have a little laughter, find out a little bit of, of her logistics and then move the interaction forward to a next date or to a second date. So once we fixed that, he was able to, he's having a good time. Uh, Jason was more, he had the money, he had a lot of money, but he didn't, he didn't have the social skills. And so for me, it was just like installing the proper setup for him where he could socialize really well. He does some cold approach, but a lot of the, the, when you, when he's, he has a lot of potential when he has pictures like that, he can hire photographers like that. It's more of like setting up the dating funnel and then his conversations, right? Because he's a CEO, he just very logical. And so one of the things we had to work on was how can you get to the emotional aspect of your conversations, right? It's like you saw the, in, in my example with Danny, it wasn't just uh, logic, logic. What do you do? Where are you from? Oh, cool. You work with mental institute. You you know, you work with mental health. So like, like, do you have, like, is that fun? Like, are you like, like a therapist? Like, so like do you work in a hospital, right? I'm not so logical. I'm, I'm more emotional in my conversations and emotions is what people, especially women drive them to take action or to take that next step with you. Michael was a college student. He was actually really, really talented for his age. Like very, very charismatic guy. Um, he was really af afraid. And so I just showed him like, look, this just go up and just 
say these lines and he saw like how easy it was. Um, one of the things that he learned the most, I think was outcome independence, which is like, it doesn't matter if it doesn't go well. Right. And the grand scheme of things, like if you ever look at like Grant Cardone or, or Gary V, like these guys that got rejected before they were famous, they got rejected hundreds of times, but we don't remember all the rejection. We just remember like the sales that they closed, the deals that they closed. And it's the same way with like cold approach, which is all the rejections are lessons until you get to that one success. And sometimes all it takes is one to really feel like, you know, the door has been broken open. And it's like, you ever, you ever go to a club or a venue and you're like rejection, rejection. And then you find that one girl that's like giving you, giving you attention and value. I think when that happens, then something switches in your brain and you're like, oh, the world's not so bad. And then from one green light, it leads me to another green light and then leads me to another green light. So that's kind of, that was the biggest lesson I think with Michael. My mentor shared this with me, one of my mentors, and he shared this with me during the pandemic when I was really having a hard time. And he said, listen, most people in life do nothing, right? And that's why you see like, especially like if you're lame in your twenties and if you don't do anything, have you ever noticed as people get older, they get even exponentially lamer? <laughs> I have. Um, and so what happens is if you do nothing, right, your life trajectory basically like goes down because as you age, right, limitations start to creep up, physical limitations, financial limitations, social circle limitations. You no longer have the benefit of your, of your college circle. You no longer have the benefit of your alumni group, your work group, right? Your young professionals association, all these things get taken, not taken away, but they, they get replaced with nothing. And as you, as an adult, you have to figure out ways to, to create your own circles. And if you don't do that, if you don't acquire the skill set, then life gets bad. If you do some things as some people do life, kind of, you have to find a way to like keep the equilibrium. Right. But I feel like, you know, my mentor told me this, he's like, even in the pandemic, if you do the right things now, like once you hit that spiraling effect, then as time goes on, you get better and better. Right. It's like, as time goes on now, when I talk to girls, the more time I spend with them, the more I know they're attracted to me. So it just becomes like the stacking effect. I'm so happy that 20 years ago, it's been 15 years for me that I like made that decision, right. To, to learn social skills because not a day goes by where I, where I said, I regretted that. I'm so happy that I made that decision because I wouldn't have the gifts I have now in my social skills, in my life, in my communication skills, in my career. Um, so yeah, I think this is a pretty cool model of, of how most people live their lives. Lead funnels. I talk about this briefly in my, if you ever get into my program, my course, we talk about how to set up a lead funnel properly so that you build a huge social circle. Um, I'm not the biggest Dan Bilzerian fan, but, and it's, he's, the guy's funny because this new book is like, I think something like $40, which is ridiculous, right? I think if you, if you actually sold it for like $10, people would buy it, but it's called the setup. And um, the funny thing is the guy, like I always study like whatever, that person's good at, I studied that person. And one of the things he's real good at is the setup. And, and basically I teach that um, with my clients. It's how do you set up your life in a way that uh, supercharges your dating results, okay? And, and that's one of the things I can discuss in more detail if you're interested. Five hook points of dating. You saw me and Danny get to the social hook point where she's like, within, I think within the second line, I got to the social hook point, which is, I'll, I'll talk to this guy, he seems interesting. I don't know if we reached a sexual hook point, but we definitely reached the first date hook point where she's at least interested in getting to see me again. And then you reach like the sexual hook point, the second sexual hook point, which is I, I'm, I'm sexually attracted to him. I, I want to sleep with him as opposed to I'm open to sleeping with him. Then there's a relationship hook point, which is I'm open to get into a relationship with this person, right? For most guys, if you don't have game, it's like, oh my God, first hot chick or like, oh, this is the hottest chick I've been with. All right. Let's get into a relationship. <laughs> and how does that turn out? Uh, well, I guess you learned the lesson, but when you have, when you have options, it's like, do I want to get into a relationship with this person? And then it's like the falling in love hook point. So when you have girls falling in love with you, you actually have to, I'll use a Spider-Man quote, but with great power comes great responsibility because you actually have to control her falling in love cycle to slow it down. If you're not serious, um, because then there's heartbreak and there's some negative emotions involved. But your ability to get someone to hook onto you, to want to be in a relationship with you, to actually fall in love with you, will give you a level of confidence and competence where you always know you have options. And from that standpoint, you're no longer ever thinking that getting a girl is going to be effort or it's going to be a problem that you need to solve. 
because that problem has already been handled. So these five hook points in dating are what my, I help my clients get through uh, by being more themselves, by expressing themselves in a way that hits these triggers consistently, predictably, quickly. And so once you know that, it's like, okay, I want to get into a relationship or, okay, I want to date around. You can always control the, the level of hook points that you want to get there. Okay. If you want more, what do you do next? And is there an exact roadmap of where you want to go? So these work, whether you want to find a future wife, or if you want to date, like just date around for a while, do it authentically and honestly, that's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that I would ask myself is like, how much is getting your dating life handled? Right. So I, I remember when I started this thing, I would go to, um, God, I would fly to so many different cities just to hang out with this dude. And sometimes they were like annoyed. They were like, bro, you're here. Like, I didn't know you were coming here. And I'm like, Hey, I just drove two hours, man. Can you, can we hang out? And he was like, fine, whatever. But for me, it was like, I don't care. I would have, dude, I would, at a, as a 23 year old depressed virgin with no friends, you know, out of school, if you told me you could do this, man, I would have been like, you know, cause I'm Asian. So I'll save 20%, but I would have given you 80% of my life savings just to learn this shit. Um, because that was how painful it was. It's like, if you could have this handle, like how much would that be worth to you? And, and I would ask yourself that question. You don't, not even spending money with me, but like, what would it take like to, for you to invest in yourself? And I don't, it doesn't have to be a financial investment. It could be a time investment, effort investment. I'm going to go out this weekend, learn this stuff, maybe hire a coach for an hour to go over everything. But you have to, at some point you have to decide like, this is what I'm willing to put in myself to get good at this. And I think until that happens, right, there's, there's excuses. It's like, I'm afraid or I'm depressed or, you know, you just, you never break through those, those little walls that you have, that you think you have, or maybe some, for some people it's real, but it's like, they never break through. Cause it's just like, they never made that decision to, to change their life. And, and so they get stuck and you see, that's how you see guys like in the same situation, like three years later, it's like, oh, this guy hasn't changed. Maybe he's changed, but in his dating life, he, nothing's changed. Success leaves clues. Yeah. So find someone who has the results and just replicate it for yourself. That's the fastest way. Not every guy you find, not every mentor you find will, will resonate with you or have the same ethics as you. Some of the techniques might not apply to you or you don't think it, you feel good doing it. So find people that you feel like are, are closer to your personality, find out their reference points, copy it and get successful quickly. When I was running my business, um, I remember I was losing a lot of money. And then when I found my mentor, Tony, within the second week, I was making like three grand profit a, a day. I know it was insane. <laughs> I couldn't believe it either. And that's the power of mentorship, right? Cause someone who's already been there, he can tell you all the roadblocks you're going to face. He can, he can speed, speed you through all of the challenges that you'll have. If you don't have a mentor, like you can spend just months thinking about like this one approach or like, oh, I should have said this, or I wonder what the girl's thinking. I wonder why she didn't text me back. And it just like goes on forever, man. It just sucks, dude. So don't do that. I mean, I encourage you not to do that. Yeah, it's never a waste of time to invest in yourself, no matter what the source is, right? True, true wealth begins, it be, begins inward. Um, I think this quote, I think in particular, resonates with how I teach my type of game, so to speak. So just to style, you guys, some of you know, some of you who don't know, it's like, so I, I was trying to figure out how can I cut my, uh, effort by half. And I realized like improving your style is one thing. So there's like fixing your style and then there's like elite style. And then when I had elite style combined with like my social skills, I actually social engineered my way into my modeling career because my first fashion show, I had met the organizer and I met her through a volunteer. So I, I literally became friends with these people. And then, so when I applied, do you think I had a better chance <laughs> because I knew them? Of course. Right. But I realized that a lot of the fashion advice out there just like doesn't apply or doesn't get to the core of it. So I realized like there's too much information. It's not applicable. So I dived into like studying what made people beautiful, what made guys have that effect, that slow motion effect when you walk into a room. So I spent like a year doing that. And then I realized like, okay, there's like a way to hit attraction triggers using style attraction triggers. And you know, those are like core principles, like dominance, eliteness, openness, right? You want to be dominant. So she feels a masculine attraction. You want to be elite. So she has the idea that you have the social hierarchy flexibility, 
And then you want to have openness so that it's like a golden Labrador or golden retriever. It's like, you want to go talk to that, that person that draw. So those are the three triggers. And then there's five more. Um, but this course basically combines like all of the concepts of, of dating skills, but also with like style. The reason I mentioned seduce with style so much is because I think if you can get this one aspect handled, even if you don't have a lot of verbal game, you get a lot of opportunities to engage and your reference experience of the women get better because women will stand close to you. They'll give you the benefit of the doubt. And I feel like this one thing is if you're super like socially trapped or anxious, fixing this one thing will, will have the highest chance for you to actually get the positive experiences that you want to start making that inner shift in your mindset, which is, oh, I am pretty cool. Like I am worth it, right? Style is one of those things that you can transform like overnight. Peter uh, got the course a couple of years ago, um, and then he ended up signing to an uh, agency. Um, not at, look, about 2% of my clients get into agencies, but you have to have the right height for sure. Like that's just, you know, that's just the, the, the requirement of the market. But for most guys, it's like, they just look better. Um, Joel, he was just like, like a nice, easygoing hippie dude. And then he, when he worked on his style, he started getting a lot more comments. He started, people just saw him differently. He was still that nice jovial guy that everyone liked, but now it's like, there's a professionalism. There's a attractiveness to him, like this leanness to him that they didn't have before. Elia, um, my LA based, uh, my assistant coach and former friend, former, uh, client friend, and then became my assistant coach. He was already a good looking guy. So his style just took him to the next level. And then, it, you know, my like financially stable Asian guys, it's like, it, it's, it's not as hard for you to like make that transformation. Cause you know, not to stereotype, but Asian guys usually financially are set, but they just don't have that social aspect handled. So these are just like very efficient ways to get you the result that you want. Um, you can learn more about seduce with style. If you go to high integrity style four, if you, uh, and if you're one of my clients already, just DM me and I'll get you access to it. Dating without borders. Uh, do we have Asian guys? We do have some Asian guys on this call. So the problem as an Asian guy was like, when I talk to girls, I would have the unconscious social bias. You guys know what it is. It's that look in the girl's eyes. Like no matter what you say, or how cool you are, she's not interested. Right. <laughs> I remembered that when I was growing up with my dad, he was a diplomat. We would live in Africa. We lived in Indonesia, Italy, and my dad always made friends with everybody. And I realized, like, I, I asked my dad, like, how are you doing this? And I, I remember when I was little, he explained to me, like, these concepts that he used for diplomacy. And then I was like, oh, I can actually use this for dating. So for example, one of the, one of the things that you'll notice when you talk to people from a different culture is the there's an automatic fight or flight response. Whenever you talk to someone who you haven't, you haven't talked to someone who looks like that, there's a fight or flight reaction, right? So I, I came up with a line that like, uh, assuades that. So the line is, if you're interested, um, I know we look like two completely different people, but wouldn't be interest, wouldn't it be interesting if we had a five minute conversation, right? So I'm acknowledging, I'm bringing the unconscious fight or flight to the conscious awareness. And then I came up with the whole attraction cycle to overcome that fear that, that unconscious bias that basically calms it down and then builds attraction. Um, so some, some, I think for Asian guys, it's just, they don't realize that a solution exists. And so usually the feedback I get from that course is pretty good. Um, and I, it took me a long time to build that course because I was like, how do I build it in a way that can actually help Asian guys really fast. Dating without borders.net is the URL. And if you're interested in the actual course, DM me or go to this link right here, high integrity skills slash by DWB. Okay. I wanted to thank you guys for staying this long. So I want to reward people that make decisions, man, to invest in yourself. So the first promo, um, for today would be if you don't have the course, if you want access to seduce with style or dating without borders, then. If you get it today, I'll give you first day formula for free. The second promo is if you want to get all three products, just I'll give you 20% off. Okay. And if you're interested in that, just DM me. Actually, let me give you a link right now to that because I think a lot of people might be interested in this. There we go. That way you just have access to everything. Um, and then if you are not an Asian guy, then I would suggest just get Seduce the Style. And then just DM me today and I'll get you access to the first day formula. Okay.
Yeah, so um, these offers expire by 10 p.m. So, so that you can make proper decisions and make them quickly. Uh, as long as you purchase between before that deadline, we'll track all the orders and then we'll get you uh, uh, the promos and the discounts. Questions? Okay, does anyone have any questions? And then I'm going to share with you a really cool uh, program that I'm running. I don't have any questions so far about any of the things I talked about. A right, quick question. Yeah. So uh, in one of your uh, YouTube videos, uh, video you talked about the priorities, like by variety score. Variety score. To, that's right. Yeah. Variety variety score to basically quickly uh, screen out the the you know uh, what do you, you call it the uh, agent contract ratio. Yeah. By asking three three categories of questions. Yeah. Um, and my question will be. Let's like for example, one one of the question there is to uh, ask her if you tap your foot three times, uh, you could be anywhere anywhere in the world and come back instantly. Where would you go? Right. And if you, so, my take on that is okay. If she gets out a place that is sort of foreign, that is an indicator of yes, she is more flex, flex higher flexibility. Yeah. But like, what will be a quantitative, quantitative indicator to find out like she actually has a high variety score? Because it's like the one answer doesn't tell you the the you know the the qualitative side of things. Sure. Uh, so Iran, yeah. So um, I talk about that in the course. Um, but it's, but again, like, it's not like a mathematical equation. It's not like E equals MC squared. Um, there are, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's much as an art is a science when it comes to social skills, as I discussed mm -hmm. earlier, there are kind of three dimensions to it, right? One is the, the, the level of adventurousness and uncertainty someone wants in their life, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who's going to date outside their culture, usually generally speaking, has a higher adventure threshold and an uncertainty threshold. Like they don't want life to be the same boring. They want some variety in their lives, right? Mm -hmm. The second factor is the flexibility score, which is how flexible are they to, to different thoughts and ideas and different ways of life, right? You can be really flexible, but not adventurous. So someone who's like flexible thinking, but not adventurous, you can also be really adventurous, but not flexible, right? And then the third variation is how much does she, uh, how much does she respond to like different cultures, right? So, so how much resonance and how much what we call it conscientiousness does she have? for people that have a completely different background than her. So those three dimensions, right? If you want to give us, give it a score is how I kind of me like mentally decipher like what her variety score is. And then from there, I can decide if I want to spend my time with her or not. Okay. Good question though. Thanks. Anyone else before I move on? Uh, Edwin asks, how do I DM you, you here? Is that Facebook or? Yeah, you can DM me on Facebook or Instagram. So um, do you have the links to my Facebook or Instagram? I'll, get, I'll, I'll get put it in the link. Yeah, it's easy. So Instagram's great. Uh, Instagram doesn't have a 5,000 friend limit, so that's nice. And then Facebook, I will give you as well. That's my Instagram. This is my Facebook. Yeah, um, both Instagram and Facebook. I'm on Facebook more, but basically allows me to leave voice notes. So it just get, allows me to get back to you quickly on stuff. Okay, so one of the questions I asked myself was, all right, so digital products are great. Guys learn them. I get a lot of success stories. But one of the things that I have is sometimes they misinterpret certain things or I, like the calibrations I need to be made don't happen as fast as I would like it. So I'm like, how do I come up with a program that gets them <laughs> good as fast as possible? So I started with a mentorship, which is uh, once we meet twice a week, there are virtual practice dates where you get uh, go on dates with girls and we actually record those dates. And it's, it's fascinating because you, you see with definitive proof how good a guy's interaction is. Um, and then uh, if you want to come to Vegas to train with me, you can if you're in a mentorship program. One of the coolest things I noticed about it is that guys that will leave me really quick voice notes, texts or pictures on WhatsApp. And I can get back to them really quickly and concisely through that. And then because it's in a group environment, it's funny because so many people have the same sticking points, right? And you'll see, you can learn so much from other people's mistakes or what they're learning that it just has a group effect after a while. So your ability to like, for me to optimize your text messages, give you the principles behind it, optimize your dating profile, just allows you to learn a lot faster. 
one of the coolest things I was able to pioneer because I was, I used to be modeling is I have these connections with women who look a certain way, but also like have the very different personality types. And so when you go on like these virtual dates with these girls, you'll be able to get very quickly the feedback, right? I, after the dates, I asked all the girls, like, what were your thoughts on everybody? And they will give me very precise, uh, instructions like what they did, right. What they did wrong. I also go through the recordings myself. So just a really fast way to learn. And then we measure this result every month after training to see if there's an impact just to get, just to give you a this one day that i had look at all the notes that i took <laughs> from this one well these are one two i think there's three dates in here but these are all the things that i noticed uh social interaction wise that um, i'm going to talk about in my mentorship so um some feedback it's just really a good way to learn quickly if you're interested this one's by application only, right? Because I'm trying to get the guys in the group. I want the energy field to stay the same. So apply if you're interested. It's a thousand a month, nine ninety seven a month, but that price will go up because we're in cycle three and the the process is getting better and better. So again, what would you be willing to get paid to get your dating life handled, right? So for me, when you're in my mentorship, it's like I my job is to be the coach that I wish I had when I was a, a twenty three year old virgin. So for me, it's like very precise, accurate, uh, things that you need to adapt to change and you'll get it very quickly. And so that level of momentum, I believe will get you to the next step very quickly. Um, if you go to highintegrityseals.com, go to get, get coaching and you click on apply for training. Uh, that's where you can apply. I'll just give you a link right now because I am taking applications for cycle three. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, lastly, some of you asked how to get in touch with me. So here it is my email. This is my Facebook to message me. And then my Instagram is here. Okay. 